Thank you for tuning in to Choices Now TV. I'm so glad to be back with you once again. Just uh, want to come to you very briefly, very briefly, just an update. Um, thank you all for who, you know, to those who commented on the last video. Uh, we were talking about a um, gun control bill that was had passed through the House and it's on its way to the Senate. Uh, but now we're going to talk about one other bill that is uh, that was passed in the House as well on June June 9th, and that was HR 2377. Someone left a comment about looking into that, and I did. I took the time to go ahead and, and look at that bill. Let me say this before I get into this. What I find is that there, and not just me, others are finding as well, there are a lot of bills and legislation, things that are, are, are happening every day. There's happen, It's legislation being pushed and being put out before uh, the judicial committees, and um, some are passing, some are not. But what I'm giving you today, and it's not that I'm stuck on gun control or anything like that, but this is one I thought that I really wanted to just bring just a little attention to. Like I said, it's going to be very brief. Uh, and this is uh, HR 2377. HR 2377. Have you heard of it? Do you know what it's about? So what this bill is, uh, it was proposed, let me say this first. It was first presented in April of 2021, April 2000 of 21. And it's HR 2377 is the Federal Extreme Risk Protection Order Act of 2021. That's what it's entitled as. The Federal Extreme Risk Protection Act of 2021, once again, this first went to um, to the House back in April of 2021. And it was just presented recently. Um, so it was received by the Senate, okay, passed the House, and it was received by the Senate on June 9th. The Senate received and it was read twice and referred to the committee on the judiciary. So this bill is moving forward. Now, let me say, I just want to read a little caption of what this bill is about. In case you weren't aware, this bill is about, and I'm reading verbatim. Okay, this is coming from congress.gov. Congress.gov, you can go to congress.gov. And you can find out uh, about different uh, laws they're trying to put on the books. Those that have passed, those that have not passed. Some may interest you, some may not. But I wanted to just, uh, and I'm not going to stay on this very long, but as I find things that are interesting, I will bring it to you. So this particular bill says, uh, this bill authorizes and establishes procedures for the federal courts to issue federal extreme risk protection orders. Okay, listen at this. This bill authorizes, I'm reading this again, this bill authorizes and establishes procedures for federal courts to issue federal extreme risk protection orders. Now, a federal extreme risk protection order is a federal court order that prohibits a person from purchasing, possessing, here is this, or receiving a firearm, or ammunition. Now, it also states, this is just a brief a synopsis of what this bill is. A family or household member or law enforcement officer may petition for a federal extreme risk protection order with respect to an individual who possesses a, who poses a risk to themselves or others. Now that's, you know, that has some, there's some pros and cons with that. And I don't want to get into it. I just wanted to bring it to your attention as to what's happening out there. There's always like a smoke screen. I'm just going to say always a smoke screen. Now, listen, it says here, this bill also expands the categories of persons who are prohibited from purchasing, shipping, transporting, possessing, or receiving a firearm or ammunition. And it's also, it talks about persons who are subject to an extreme risk protection order. Now, listen. 
if someone feels that you are in danger to yourself or others and you own a gun, they can position to take that gun away. That's the good thing about it. But if someone just has a vendetta against you and they want to, you know, just make your life a living hell, can I say that? <laughs> you know, they can go to the courts and, and they can put some things in motion. I hope it's not that simple. I hope it's not that simple. But just know that this is what's going on. <clears throat> now, what passed in the house, and at each time that it was presented, they kind of give a, a general, um, there again, synopsis of what the bill is about. Now, the last one, the one that the Senate received, because they make changes along the way, they make adjustments along the way, says here, this bill authorizes and establishes procedures for the federal court to issue federal extreme risk protection orders. Additionally, this bill established grants to support the implementation of extreme risk protection order laws at the state and local level. Now, that wasn't in the first part that I, you know, the first little uh, synopsis that I read, but it is in this last one that went to the Senate. It passed the House, it went to the Senate. Now, it states here, um, extends federal firearms restrictions to individuals who are subject to extreme risk protection orders and expands related data collection. They're tracking. Extreme risk protection order laws or red flag laws generally allow certain individuals law enforcement officers or family members to petition a court for a temporary order that prohibits an at-risk individual from purchasing and possessing firearms. Now, did you hear that? It's just a temporary order, but they can still petition the court for this to be so, that you not have uh, access to your firearm. Among this, its provision, the bill authorizes a family member, household member, law enforcement. Okay, and I think we just went we just went over that, but they did some bullet points here. It says uh, authorize a family member, household member, or law enforcement officer to petition a federal extreme risk protection order with respect to individuals who pose a risk to themselves or others. That's a good thing. The second one says directs uh, the Department of Justice to establish a grant program to help states, local governments, Indian tribes, and other entities implement extreme risk protection orders. So this is at the federal level, now it's coming down to our local level. Now, why did I want to bring this here? A lot of times we're looking at the national, uh, what's happening in, you know, in D.C., and we're not taking the time really to pay attention to what's happening in our local governments. And I'm not saying all of us, but a lot of us, we, we don't take the time really to, um, you know, pay attention to what's happening in our local government. Now, I'm really not a political person. I don't like to get in, you know, wrapped up in all of that, but you have to be aware. You have to be aware of what's happening concerning you. So we, we push, we push, we push to get out for the national election, but we need to, we need to step forward for our local election, our local elections. Because it starts here and it moves up, okay? So when you elect your governors, when you elect your different representatives, those that are representing your area, your county, your you know different parts, your district, you have to know what they stand for. And if what they stand for, does it represent your values? Does it represent your values? So when you are making your choices and your decisions, you have to keep those things in mind, okay? Take those things into consideration. Now, uh, the last two, and then I'm going to get off here. Uh, it says, extends federal restrictions on the receipt, possession, shipment, and transportation of firearms and ammunition to individuals who are subject to extreme risk protection orders. Okay, now it requires, this last one says, requires the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI, to compile a federal, tribal, and state uh and state court and other agencies that identify individuals who are subject to extreme risk protection orders. Now, a lot of, listen, this went to the house 
back in April of last year, 2021. Now it's just getting passed. There's so much going on. Every state, there's lobbyists, everybody has their hand out there trying to get things passed. But this happened just last year. Now the last bill I talked about, and that was spurred on because of the recent shootings. Uh, in particular, uh, the Buffalo and Uvalde, okay? So because of that, and we've had many mass shootings, uh, mass killings since Columbine. We've had so many, but it's, they're slow to really make changes. But the reason I brought this one up in particular, yes, it has some teeth, but will that solve the problem? And that was my question during the last bill. Will it solve the problem of the crime that we have? Something for you to think about. So thank you so much for tuning in to Choices Now TV. If you like the content, subscribe, share, you know, tell someone about the channel. Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up. So I just wanted to bring that to you. Yes, I do look at the comments. Yes, I do go and do the research and find out, you know, really what's going on with it. And one last thing I want to leave with you, and I'm going to post this on the screen as well. When you want to find out about what's happening in our government, you this information is public information. You just have to take the time. You can't depend on your local news or your national news to bring you this information because there's so much out there. And because there's so much out there, a lot of things they'll pick and choose as to what to bring to the people. Okay? So I want you to go to congress.gov. Congress.gov. And when you go to Congress.gov, you can look at the legislation. You can look at those bills that, that have been presented, those that have been passed, those that have been rejected, not only for the national, but you can also go to your local uh, legislative offices right from Congress.gov, and you can put in local legislative offices. And a, a map will come up. And on that map, you just click on your state, and it will take you to your state legislation, okay? And it'll show you, it'll let you see uh, what's going on in your state, what kind of laws are trying to be passed, what has been passed, what has been rejected. Those things are available to you. No matter what any state, that information is available to you. Once again, that's congress.gov. And you're gonna say uh, state legis... When you get there, you just type in state legislation website, state le legislation websites, and that's going to take you to your local legislation. Okay. It's the same process as the national. They have to go through, you know, uh, the house, the Senate, the governor. Okay. And then it becomes a law. You know, I, I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. So it's that... <laughs> That particular Schoolhouse Rock video, it is very informative. It kind of makes you aware of the process. And the process is not, okay, I presented it. All right, it's going to happen tomorrow. It doesn't work that fast unless an executive order is put in place. From the president and or the governor, they have the authority to make an executive decision. So I'm going to get off of here now. Um, I'm going to put that information on the screen so that you can, at your leisure, Go and check it out. So once again, thank you for tuning in to Choices Now TV. I hope you're having a great day. And until next time, I'm out.